today is an interesting day because I've chosen to share one of the more interesting stories of my uh, time in Israel here. Clearly I've been using the latest cutting edge identity masking techniques to disguise my identity and we're also recording this in an undisclosed location. All we can say is that the location is a field in uh, the greater Jerusalem, Israel, or really we can't say that, we're recording this on a field somewhere in Israel. So I thought I'd uh, tell a little bit about one of my Aliyah war stories, so to speak. It was about the second year that I was in Israel, and I just finished up with the first job. I was between jobs, moving apartments, getting used to the place and all that stuff. And I saw this ad on Facebook. The ad was for customer service representatives. It's not the type of thing I typically do as a career. My day job is working in marketing communications, but it seemed to me like a fine job as I was looking for a more permanent job. It was advertised as like this call center or something needs customer service reps right to this email address if you're interested. The first red flag, and this is, uh, these are red flags for anyone trying to avoid these kind of operatives, is it was a Gmail address. I didn't think too much of it at the time, but you know, in retrospect, that was a bit dodgy. So I write to this Gmail address and I get in touch with this person. Now, what's weird is that the person, the name on the advertisement was, let's, let's say it was a woman, right? So let's say the name was Sarah. I'm just making up a name. So I get this call, but it's at like two in the morning. So I'm woken up in bed by a phone call doesn't happen that frequently and I'm like who's this so the, the first the second thing that didn't really match up was that she gave a different name it was the job calling me back and I was like you know it's two in the morning are you based in Israel and she's like yeah we're based in Israel so that was a bit strange that they thought that it was like normal to call up candidates at like the small hours of the morning let me cut to the chase of the story so she calls me and she's like we should set you up for a job interview so she chooses the following morning and another weird sign is that she wants to meet in a cafe so at this point i don't know the name of the company i only know they have a gmail address the recruiter seems to be operating from like two or three different identities and we were, we've decided to meet in a kind of shitty cafe so it's starting to get a bit more interesting anyway roll forward to the next day and i go to meet in this cafe so i'm meeting this lady and i'm not like oh you're sarah she responded that that wasn't her name so now we have three different names anyway she tells me that basically it's a moving company so finally the details or the faint details of what this operation is about begin to become transparent and she said that this was like a call center they help people to move their belongings between different places in the US. She tells me there is a training cohort starting on the next day. Red flag four, when stuff moves really, really quickly, my experience can be a bit of a red flag in its own right. So she tells me there's a training cohort, so I, I agree, we have our coffee, and we go our separate ways. The next day, I'm trying to find this training cohort and trying to find their office. It's located in a building in central Jerusalem where there's a bunch of other normal businesses, there's like a Berlitz language school and there's, you know, other stuff. So I can't find their office, so I call the number and they're like, it's to the left of the travel agent. So I look for a travel agent and to the left is the only door on the floor which doesn't have any signage. There's nothing. It's just like a wooden door. So again, I'm like, what the, what the hell is this place? This is weird. So it started, the details are starting to, I'm beginning to get the feeling I'm going into some sort of a scam business. So anyway, I go in there and uh, there's this trainer guy. He's a very, very well-spoken guy. Uh, it, it immediately begs the question, what are you doing? Um, he said he had an advanced scientific degree. What are you doing working in a moving call center? What the hell am I doing working in a moving call center? That's another question. And then I notice on the whiteboard, the office has a whiteboard and it has today's weather in New Jersey, 19 degrees, sunny, you know, the symbols. And then there's like tomorrow's weather, high of 20 degrees or whatever that is in Fahrenheit. So I, I've mentioned uh, before, I'm a big fan of Simona Wineglass's reporting in the Times of Israel. 
She's done an amazing job in reporting on the binary forex scam. I tried to get her interested in the story. She says there's not enough details about it. Hence why I'm sitting in a park in an anonymous mask telling the story myself. Anyway, so we go in there. There's this, uh, the weather forecast is on the door. So I'm like, what the hell is that about? The other weird thing is that when the training starts, there's only one other attendee, right? So they made this big social media push. They were sponsoring ads. And I'm like, how is it that in a city of 1 million people, it's me and this other dude. We are the training cohort. The other guy also, it's worth noting, seems kind of a bit strange. He mentioned some weird story about being in London and a guy chased him with an off. At this point, I'm getting this kind of feeling that I've stepped into some sort of a Matrix-like world where reality and fiction are wavy. So the training starts and we're learning to use a CRM. Now, people who have worked in the world of sales or marketing probably know a CRM. It's like Salesforce. It's a computer program where you put in the leads of your customers and whatever. The weird thing about this one was that I, I, to me, it looked very, very custom coded. This was not a Salesforce or a pipe drive. This was something that they made themselves. It's all these crazy calculations. The training consisted of us basically, the story they were selling was that there is a moving company. They're based in the US. We're based in Israel. People will get quotes from the website. They'll fill out, I want to move my stuff from Florida to New York. And we get the leads. So we get the leads and we have this call with the customers. And he's training us what to do. So the guy says, and I'll never forget this, he says, the first thing you have to say is, in your mind, invite me to your house. Pretend I am in your house. What do you see? Do you see a dining room? Do you see? And it went on like this and this. And I was like, this is odd, right? Eventually, it's time for a break. So I go out to get some like falafel and water and what have you. And at this point, I'm kind of connecting the dots of what this thing's about. So I put into Google Israeli moving scams. The guy let on the name of the company. The company had about four different names because like all these scam operations, it's constantly trying to... Uh, it's a game of cat and mouse with the authorities. Another thing that's uh, big in the world of Boric, uh, Forex and binary is that this whole thing of companies being based in the US but actually operating from Israel, gives, it makes it very hard to prosecute this kind of white collar crime. So I knew all this when I was searching. The name of the company that they gave in the training session came up and it was hundreds and hundreds of negative reviews on Yelp.com saying this place is a scam. I later found out that Israeli moving companies, there's a lot of Israeli movers in the US, and a portion of them are fraudulent operations. I'm not saying they're all fraudulent. When I started digging into the reviews on Yelp about this company, the place whose training center I was just in with no wooden door, it started making sense. They said, firstly, the people kept changing their names, which definitely uh, matched up with my experience. The second thing is they said they're based in some foreign country, but they seem to know the weather really well. I was like, well, yeah, they have it on the whiteboard. The third thing, and this is really well connected, they said, I got a quote. They came in with a super low ball offer that was very, very inviting. But when, when my goods arrived on the truck in Florida, wherever, wherever the move was to, I got this crazy, crazy invoice. Effectively, what was going on was a form of extortion. The customer, the victim, scam victim in the US, would send in a moving request form to this lead capture website. That would come in to these people sitting in Israel. And our job, when we were asked to tell us about your living room, do you have a bed? Does the bed have cushions? Does the bed, does the bed have legs? Does your dining table have legs? All that stuff was because we were being trained to enter every single thing into our custom CMS. So they think, so they're getting a bill for like $100 for, $500 for your table, $100 times five for each leg and jacking up the quote. And then we were effectively holding their goods hostage on a moving truck in the US. Those are the details as I piece them together. That's why the scam is in Israel. I think it's one of the smaller scam industries here. There's probably four or five. I don't know if this was a major operator of this scam or a small operator, but everything I read online meticulously matched the details of what I experienced. I came back into the training center and that was my first and last day on shift because I realized it was a scam. And I said, I'm gonna be looking for other opportunities. That's my story of spending a couple of days in the scam, in scam industry in Israel. I've had a couple of interesting experiences and perhaps I'll come back to this uh, 
undisclosed location to share a couple of those more.